Before the countdown was to start, the satellite and last stage rocket, shrouded to prevent even the slightest abrasion, was at the launching pad. Dwarfed by the giant missile and the protective scaffold of the gantry, the payload, weighing 30.8 pounds, 80 inches in length, is raised toward the top, where it will be carefully fitted into place, like a glittering jewel in a luminous setting. At X minus two hours, Hydee, an exotic liquid oxygen oxidizer for the fuel, begins to flow into the tanks. Frosty white vapor hisses from the vent. Minutes click past relentlessly. The beams of powerful searchlights light up the missile. Truly the star of one of the greatest suspense dramas of our time. The drama approaches the final act. The Army's first attempt to fire a man-made moon into orbit. Time, late evening. Friday, January 31st, 1958. In a blockhouse at Canapoli. The countdown to Explorer 1. Roger. Okay, we'll start now. Finish fuel loading. Take a weight reading. Okay. Check the utility room fuel vapors and notify the blockhouse when we're clear to start generators. Control voltage on. Gyros on. Gyro erection on. Check the mock loading has been completed. Roger. Uh, connect assembly to igniter. Okay, tie down the lead. Roger, and install your protective pad. Okay. Weight reading after last scaffold is removed. AFMTC telemeter calibration tape on. Start vibration and RPM recorders. Check all operating lights and meters for proper operation. Power panel check. Power panel okay. Control panel check. Control panel okay. Roger. Magic panel check. Magic panel okay. Roger. Cluster control panel check. Cluster control panel okay. Roger. Gyro erection off. Gyro erection off. Rudder drive on. Rudder drive on. Power transfer test on, observe and record all voltages. Power transfer test on. Power transfer off. Power transfer off. Watch the clear for launch. Clear to launch. Bob? Yeah. 021, deflection of jet main number two. We've either got a relay kicking out or the, there's something uh, dropping down on the jet main instantaneously here. Hold. Telemeter indicates the jet vane two is deflected. What do you want to do? Well, get it. Okay, resume count. Okay, shall we go ahead, Jim? It looks like that. Yeah, Roger. Fifty seconds. Forty-five seconds. Rudder drive on. Destruct arm. Rudder drive on. complete. All right, give me range safe, pass safety. Range safe. Range safe. Uh, safety altimeter recording on. Telemeter recording on. Right. ACL uh, recording on. Yeah. 20 seconds. Frequency 111, Terry. 
missile is in flight, but the success of its mission is still in doubt. It will take another hour and a half to know whether the satellite is in orbit, the most tense and harrowing wait of all. Minitrack stations, operated throughout the world by the Army, Air Force and Navy, followed the movements of the Army Earth satellite. At each of the stations, a Minitrack radio system received signals from a transmitter in the satellite. About midnight, not far from the now empty launching pad, General Medaris finally called his assistant, Colonel Leonard Orman. Hello, Len. You can send this off to the secretary. That our satellite is definitely on orbit. Now get that off and then I'll give you the figures in a few minutes. Okay, boy. In Washington at the National Academy of Science, a packed auditorium of reporters, radio and TV interviewers heard the announcement of Dr. Richard Porter, chairman of the IGY committee. The National Academy of Sciences and the National Science Foundation announced that as part of the U.S. International Geophysical Year program, a scientific Earth satellite was placed in orbit at five seconds after 10.55 p.m by means of a Jupiter-C rocket vehicle launched by the Army at Cape Canaveral, Florida. A similar statement is being issued by the President. And I should like to add my personal congratulations to the Army Ballistics Missiles Agency and to Dr. Von Braun and Dr. Pickering and their colleagues for a job well done. Before the news conference, the big picture camera and Sergeant Stuart Queen drew Dr. Von Braun aside for a special interview. Dr. Von Braun, I wonder if you could tell our big picture viewers just what did transpire during those 84 days. Well, those were rather hectic 84 days, I can assure you of that. Uh, a project like uh, firing a satellite into orbit is uh, only possible if there's splendid teamwork all the way through. In this particular case, this teamwork involved, at first, close cooperation between our own Army Ballistic Missile Agency in Huntsville, Alabama, and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Between the two of us, the vehicle was developed uh, that carried the satellite into orbit. There was also very close cooperation between us and Iowa State University, which pioneered the payload. Jet Propulsion Laboratory also had a big hand in repackaging this payload for our vehicle, because uh, this uh, payload was originally designed with a Vanguard vehicle in mind as a potential carrier. Other groups that uh, uh, deserve much credit in our successful satellite uh, try are the uh, military and civilian personnel of Patrick Air Force Base down in Florida from where the missile was fired. The range operation down there and uh, everybody from the command of the proving ground down to the last cameraman uh, gave us splendid support. The tracking of the missile as it circles around the globe is in the hands of both IGY personnel and personnel of the Naval Research Laboratory. So you have a, an example here of splendid teamwork involving all three services. And